Hi y'all, welcome back to the Way Out West YouTube channel. Well, as they say, the best laid plans of mice and men. I stated in our first YouTube video that I had planned to do some short interviews with artists that were due to play at the club. Well, thank you COVID for scuttling that promise. All is not lost though. Last year, Bernie and I interviewed many Way Out West musicians for the 20th anniversary book. Subtle hint. You've got to go and buy the book from our website. We have many hours of Zoom footage of those interviews. Today, today I present a short clip of the incredible Jeff Lang talking about some of his slide guitar influences. Even better is that I have somehow managed to remove Bernie and my ugly mug from the footage so you can concentrate on Jeff's musings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's like Elmore James. I mean, it's similar to Elmore James, but it's got that same thing where it's it's there's no problem working out what they play. Yeah. No. It's not complex, yeah. but at the same time, there's a you know it's just the individual person's body rhythm, the way they you know the way the angle and the the velocity they strike a string, and just the way you know you play music with your whole body, just not just your hands, and just yeah, you know. Muddy Waters playing slide, those early recordings of Muddy Waters, you know, like in the plantation recording stuff where he plays, mm. I'd be satisfied. And you go, well, you can hear what he's doing. There's, n there's not that much to it, but try and sound like that. Yeah. Because, you know, it's impossible. Yeah. Um, you'd have to be him and then to do that. Yeah. So yeah, I was, I was discovering stuff all the time. I mean, yeah, that, that first Hound Dog Taylor record was a real great discovery because I hadn't heard anyone speak about it. Um, I hadn't read an interview with anyone who mentioned him, you know, it would have been out there. I mean, George Thorogood was, was flying that flag, but I just didn't know. And so yeah. Yeah, that, some of those things are pretty potent, yeah. you know, finding something like that when you, you didn't even know you were looking for it and it's like, never heard of them. And then you put it on and go, wow, I love this. I love the other guitar player too, Brewer Phillips, love the drummer, Ted Harvey got to meet him which was a real thrill um wow. yeah i just i love all the, the the individual players in that band they were a real band yeah. it wouldn't have sounded wouldn't have sounded that way without any of those three people playing together that way uh, amazing so, so, was there, so was there a single album that really lit the fuse was, um when we're talking to jeff atchison he he, meant, he said oh, i heard the vino album and my life you know my life changed forever type of thing. um Maybe yeah. Uh, well, there's a there's a few. I don't know. If there's one. Yeah. I can remember. I can remember certain flashpoints very clearly in that sort of in those discovery things. I mean, that Hound Dog Taylor record was one. Um, yeah. Livestock by Roy Buchanan was one. Love it. Where, yeah. Where when I heard that, I just that was a real kind of wow. I want to be able to do that. Um, yeah. You know, make that sound that that keening. Tre trebly but, but fat still and biting telecaster sound i just loved yeah. that um i'm thinking as well like paris texas soundtrack by rai Kuda was a real yeah. um because i loved i think that might have been the one that made me really kind of go oh okay slide guitar you know it kind of really you know grabbed my head and turned it and went mm. this particular thing about his music is really yeah. attractive to you. Um, and, and you know, again, thanks to my old man was buying that stuff when it came out. So mm -hmm. that was just in the house. I didn't have to seek oh. that one out. That was sort of like, yeah, he, he, we, we'd listen to, we used to make car mixtapes for, for family trips. You know, we were going interstate because we moved around a fair bit. So had relatives interstate and would be always, you know, once or twice a year, for Christmas or New Year's period, or you know for a birthday or something during school holidays we'd go on a trip up to canberra or you know over to wa sometimes and um the rule was three songs a piece for each of my parents and one song each for the three of us kids yeah. and and i just sort of kept quiet about how much i liked my parents choices yeah. you know, it's not fair you know <laughs> you're getting like five or six songs that you like per round yeah. but yeah it, it, so that stuff was just playing and remember dad had bop to your drop and chicken skin music by Rai Kuda and yep. and he had six and 12 string guitar by Leo Kotke so I kind of had slide guitar in my ear but I think that Paris Texas soundtrack by Rai Kuda being so such a spotlight on 
sort of a solo, the yeah, Sublime Willie Johnson yeah. lick that he keeps using throughout that. The dark yeah. as the night, cold as the ground. He riffs on that motif a lot through that soundtrack. And so just it being so keenly focused on that aspect of acoustic slide guitar was a real kind of, oh yeah, slide guitar. I really want to do that. So when I started playing guitar, slide guitar was just part of the mix. Yeah. Right from the outset, it wasn't, um, it wasn't like sort of I play guitar and then sort of find out about slide. It's just like slide guitar is part of the instrument. <laughs> something to read during the lockdown, I highly recommend Jeff's book, Some Memories Never Die, a very funny informative narrative on the life of a touring musician. Next week, I'll have another artist interview for your enjoyment. I'm on a very steep learning curve at the moment with the DaVinci Resolve editing software. We'd love to hear from anyone out there who has some experience with the software and can maybe give me a few hints. So, until next week, I'll see you all again. And don't forget to subscribe.